Although Eric Clapton is no stranger to controversy, you can't deny that he's one of the most talented guitar players of all time. He dominated the 60s and 70s with his influence. Clapton is God was spray painted on a wall in London in the mid 60s, a sentiment that would resonate around the rock and blues scene in Britain. But who does he think is the greatest guitar player? There is one who stands above the rest, and you'll find out who before the end of the video. But before that, there are a huge amount of guitar players revered by Eric Clapton. So let's go through them, and let's start with Jimi Hendrix. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. If you learn anything new in this video, be a good boy and press that subscribe button, won't you? Jimi Hendrix's first performance in London was with Cream. Hearing incredible things about him from overseas, the group invited him on stage to play alongside Clapton. Little did Clapton know, his crown would become questioned. Keith Oldham, a renowned rock journalist of that time, wrote in The Guardian, Chandler going backstage after Clapton left in the middle of the song, which he had yet to master himself, Clapton was furiously puffing on a cigarette and telling Chaz, you never told me he was that good. After that initial meeting, Clapton grew to respect Hendrix as they became incredibly close friends. His tastes were exactly what I would want in another musician, you know, like the blues and, uh, and the where it came from. And, and also, he had this fantastic imagination for what you could do with it. And in one interview, Clapton tells a heartbreaking story of when Jimi Hendrix passed away. The night that he died, I was supposed to meet him at the Lyceum to see Sly Stone play. And I brought with me a left-handed Stratocaster. And it's the only, I found, I've just found it. I think I bought it at Orange Music. I'd never seen one before and I was going to give it to him. And he was in, he was in a box over there and I was in a box over there. And I could see him, but I couldn't. We never got together, and the next day, whack, he was gone, and I was left with that left-handed Stratocaster. <laughs> Another guitar player Clapton admired greatly had the power to make him pull over his car when he heard him on the radio. Regarded as one of the most influential musicians in the history of blues music, Stevie Ray Vaughan. And I remember thinking, I have to find out before the day is over, who that guitar player is. I mean, that doesn't happen to me very often that I get that way about listening to music. I mean, about three or four times in my life I've felt that way in a car listening to the radio where I've stopped the car, pulled over and th listened and thought, I've got to find out before the end of the day, not the, you know, sooner or later, but I have to know now who that is. And I remember, um, being fascinated by the fact that he never ever seemed to be lost in any way. I mean, it wasn't ever that he took a, a, a breather or, to, or paused to think where he was going to go next. It just flowed out of him. Always seemed to flow out of him. And actually, even that doesn't come just with virtuosity or practice or any of those. It's not a question of um, doing it over and over again or anything like that. It's just that he seemed to be an open channel. And it just flowed through me. Never, it never ever seemed to kind of dry out, you know. Because I play that. Like, when I play, I, I sometimes stop every now and then. I just stop and think, well, what am I going to do now? I don't want to do that. I don't want to repeat myself. So I'll get caught. I'll get caught up somehow. You know, free, you freeze, kind of freeze. And not most players do. And I never saw him do that. So it, he was a channel in some way. Another artist who absolutely floored Clapton when he heard him on record was Dwayne Allman. Uh, and I remember, I remember hearing Hey Jude by Wilson Pickett and calling either Armit Ertigan or Tom Dowd and saying, who's that guitar player playing on the end of, or all the way through, and they said it's a guy called Sky Dog Allman, Dwayne Allman. I think. And that just, I just filed it away because to this day I've never heard better rock guitar playing on a on a an R and B record and it's the best. In fact we should be we should have that really. <laughs>
Dwayne Ullman, just 22 at the time Eric heard his talent, certainly gets a spot on the list of Eric's favourite guitar players. Ullman would later work with Eric as he contributed greatly to the album Layla and other assorted love songs from Derek and the Dominoes. He was even offered a permanent position with Eric Clapton, but he refused in order to focus on his own project, the Ullman Brothers Band. Now, the next guitar player should be no surprise to you, Chuck Berry. I mean, he was a humongous influence on the early development of rock and roll as we know it today. Everyone from the Beatles to the Rolling Stones took inspiration from him. Well, I think Eric explains it quite well. If you were going to play rock and roll, or any upbeat number, and you wanted to take a guitar ride, you would end up playing like Chuck, or what you learnt from Chuck. Because there is very little, actually, other choice. There's not a lot of other ways to play rock and roll other than the way Chuck plays it. If you tried to play, you know all this stuff that's like, I was doing the double string stuff. It, oh, it's really full, you know? And if you, if you give me a, a, a break in a, in a fast, you know, and I start playing single, single lines, it doesn't sound right. It just doesn't sound right. It sounds thin or something, or, or too fiddly. Explain. Well, you know, I like to go, uh, set. It would be okay, but it wouldn't be as good as... Really, for me anyway. So he's really laid the law down for playing that, that kind of music. While it's probably no surprise that Chuck Berry is on this list, the next artist might be a surprise to you. John Mayer. Now, for most, when you think of John Mayer, you think of a classic pop heartthrob, not necessarily known for his guitar playing abilities. Clapton, however, was able to see through that. Mayer was included on Clapton and Friends' 2016 album, The Breeze, an appreciation of J.J. Cale. I had, you see, I had no idea that John really even thought that much about J.J. I'm not really sure if I remember, remember rightly, but I think some songs were moved around with uh, you know, he wasn't initially going to be earmarked for Magnolia, but by the time we got to New York to record him, that's what we had in play for him. Don't Wait, Magnolia and Lies. And, and he cut all those tracks in about an hour, first or second take. And I was gobsmacked, <laughs> really. I mean, you know, I knew respect for John, because you know, he's extremely gifted. His facility is phenomenal. He is a master. Uh, he doesn't even, he, I don't think he even knows how good he is. Uh, he nailed me. It's so sensitive. And back to someone else on this list who should be no surprise, Jeff Beck. If you ask the giants of the guitar world who their top three influences are, I bet that Jeff Beck would be among them. I think he is the, well, the most unique guitar player and the most, uh, Probably the most devoted, I mean, from what I know of Jeff, you know, he's either fixing his cars or playing the guitar, there's no in-between for him. Uh, and he actually has never changed, I mean, unlike myself, who's been kind of wandering around a lot of the time, uh, dabbling in this and that and being led astray, Jeff has been very consistent, you know. Next, someone with whom Clapton had an interesting relationship with, and even shared a wife with, well, sort of. George Harrison. Eric and George became incredibly good friends in the 60s. You see, George Harrison was really yearning to be respected as a guitar player, rather than just as a member of the Beatles. And his relationship with Clapton allowed him to explore that. And the two would find themselves in an interesting love triangle with Patty Boyd, the inspiration behind Clapton's Layla. But despite this, the two remained great friends, and Clapton respected him deeply among the greats of that era. The two of you go back a really long way. A long way, back to the early 60s, yeah. In fact, I was with the Yardbirds when I first met George, and he, we were on the, the Beatles Christmas show. And uh, we hit it off, and I love him very much. He's a great guy. Kind of a bit like an older brother, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It must be hard to keep up friendships in this business, though. I mean, you move a lot, you work all over the place, and... Well, as time goes by, I mean, uh, it's a bit like when you're at war, you know, the, you, know you stick together and it's like the old guys now, we, uh, we do stick together because of all the competition, you know, and I, I find that I have more in common with people that have survived the 60s and the 70s, you know, we've got 
the same sort of attitude, you know, and every one of us really, like Elton and the Stones and George and all of the guys really, they're much more mellow now. Now, another obvious inclusion on this list, John Mayall. Clapton would of course work with him with the Blues Breakers after leaving the Yardbirds. But more than that, Mayall was instrumental in moulding and developing Clapton's ability with the Blues. But when you look back, if you sort of, what, what, is, what do you consider the high point in your career, if you sort of I think, value um, it for yourself? Well, the, the high points were, I guess John Mayall was, you know, when I was first finding my feet as a blues guitar player, yeah. and I was being inspired and encouraged by John, and being fed and nurtured, you know, he really did a great job of making me value myself and bringing me out, you know. And then again, when I uh, was in, when we were forming and playing in the early days with Derek and the Dominoes, playing with my first American band. Yeah. Yeah, that was really exciting because these guys knew what it was all about. You know, they weren't imitators. They were real musicians from Tulsa, Oklahoma that knew about everything that I liked. You know. A very impressive list of guitar players so far, I'm sure you'll agree. As well as who I've already mentioned, the greats like B.B. King, Muddy Waters, Robert Johnson and Prince have all received high praise from Eric Clapton. But the greatest, according to Clapton, is Albert Lee, an esteemed and widely celebrated guitarist of music history. He's collaborated with icons like the Everly Brothers, Eric Clapton himself, Emmy Lou Harris, and the crickets throughout his extensive career. The British-born Lee found his feet in the rock and roll landscape of the 1960s in London, crossing paths and bands with the likes of Jimmy Page and Chris Farlow. He later moved to the USA and immersed himself in country music, where he would bolster his reputation as one of the swiftest guitarists in the industry. What does Clapton think of him though? He's the greatest guitarist in the world, the ultimate virtuoso. His skill is extraordinary, his ear is extraordinary, and he's gifted on just about every level. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you can get higher praise than that as a guitarist. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that love triangle between Eric Clapton and George Harrison, and it led to some of the greatest love songs of all time being recorded. Click the video here next to find out all about it. <laughs> 